Welcome to the B-Side for August 2017. Fresh cut straight out the salon. I listened to a ton of good music this month and I have records that are gonna blow your mind. Check it out. I have a lot to talk about in this video, so I'm gonna get right into it. No intro, let's do it. Heard a bunch of really good albums this month. I'm gonna tell you about them real quick. My brief thoughts. Soccer Mommy Collection. Now, I said I was super excited for some good bedroom pop, and that is exactly what I got. It is a really good, chilled out listen. It's great to throw in in the background. It's great to listen to with headphones. I recommend this album if you like dream pop, if you like bedroom pop, if you like kind of lo-fi, but still very listenable stuff. I actually contacted her because I missed out on the limited vinyl, and I was like, can I buy one? And she didn't respond. So if you're watching this, Soccer Mommy, you should respond to my email. Milo, who told you to think? Oh my God. This album is one of the best hip hop albums of the year, possibly of the past decade. That's a random bold statement, but I swear this absolutely blew my mind. I would genuinely, if I gave this a first impression review, I would give it like a nine, 9.5 out of 10. This album is up there with Damn this year. It might even be better than Kendrick's Damn. I know, sacrilege. Give it a listen first. He has these jazzy kind of glitchy beats. He does really cool vocal effects. He has some really good features from unknown rappers and all of his bars are crazy. He has a bar where he says, I'm Salazar Slytherin at the salad bar giggling, which is probably the best rap lyric I've heard all year. Milo, I promise you this album is worth your time. All of his earlier stuff is out of print on vinyl and I am pissed off that I missed out. So I'm gonna be digging for that. Hopefully I complete my collection, but I promise you, who told you to think? If you're a hip hop fan, it's gonna blow your mind. Lil Peep, come over when you're sober, part one. Now, this is kind of a guilty pleasure because it's, not really great music in terms of like being impressive or new or groundbreaking. It's groundbreaking in the sense of I don't really know too many emo hip hop acts, but it's not really great. It's not something you'd be like, wow, look at the quality and the amazing songwriting. It's very party-ish with that dark kind of emo twist to it, but I liked it. It was It's a guilty pleasure. I enjoyed pretty much every song. It feels more like a mixtape than an album because it's fairly short. That's why it's part one, I suppose. But Lil Peep, you impressed me. I'm definitely gonna check out your stuff moving forward. Two albums that I forgot to talk about in the A side because I didn't realize they were coming out. King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard has released their third album this year. Yeah, three out of five. These guys are nuts. I didn't think they'd be able to put out five by the end of the year, but they are on track to be doing it. Sketches of Brunswick East is not a psych rock album. It actually harkens back to Quarters, which is kind of their jazzy jazz fusion album they did a couple years ago. This is just like that. It is very psychedelic, but it is definitely jazz. There's some rocky elements at times, but it is a smooth, really easy listening album that just kind of takes you on a journey. It's really nice to like lie down and close your eyes too and just let the melodies take you away. This might be my favorite release of theirs this year. So if you like King Gizzard and you haven't heard their third album yet, check it out. And my boy Action Bronson, Bronsolino, put out Blue Chips 7000, which is the third installation of his Blue Chips mixtape series. Now, I think Action Bronson is one of the best rappers around. I didn't love his album, Mr. Wonderful. I thought it was good, but not great compared to his mixtapes. This is a cool album because it goes back to him in mixtape form. I haven't heard a Bronson mixtape in a little while, so it's a little less refined, no crazy features on it, except for Rick Ross. That kind of surprised me. Cool. But uh, the beats are really chilled out, and I listened to it on a long drive the other day, and it was great driving music. Bronson has a couple great lyrics in there that make you laugh, and it's just fun music. It's great. If you like Action Bronson, I think you're gonna really like Blue Chip 7000. Music news! I'm about to get real passionate on your asses. Taylor Swift released her new single, Look What You Made Me Do. I enjoy Taylor Swift, or I guess I used to enjoy Taylor Swift. I cannot stand Taylor Swift. All she talks about is how much her life sucks because of men and how empowering it is that she discovered herself. Bullshit. She's a black widow, she sucks people in, then just, just makes a song out of it. They're not good, they're all the same. So Chris is a huge fan of Taylor Swift, as we just learned. She's shedding her sad good girl attitude, girl, girl out on the town. 1989, woo, look at me, and becoming like, oh, I'm so evil now, or whatever the hell she's doing. I enjoyed Fearless, I enjoyed Speak Now, I enjoyed Some of Red, I think she's talented, or at least she is talented when she's not completely molded by her team into what to do with all of her music and lyrics. This single is garbage. I've never had more of a roller coaster of emotions than when I listened to this single. I enjoyed it for the first maybe 20, 30 seconds. I was like, oh, this is a kind of cool, dark, edgy sound. And then that dumb chorus came in that actually has been stuck in my head since I heard it, and I hate it. Look, that's what you made me do. That's what you made me. It's so bad because it's A, 
the same melody as I'm Too Sexy by Right Said Fred, who have writing credits on the song. <laughs> did you know that? No. They helped write the song, and what what did they do? They walked into the studio, they were like, I got this melody, this is gonna blow your mind. And they do the exact same melody as their big hit from the 80s? Is that what happened? Taylor, this is not a good song. Lazy songwriting, forced perspective of like this, I'm like a wounded bird and I'm, I'm coming out and I'm not gonna take anything. There's a lot of digs at Kanye throughout the album and you know, this is probably a coincidence. I really don't wanna believe she's this messed up, but the album Reputation is coming out on the 10th anniversary of Kanye's mother's death. Now, that's probably a coincidence because no one's that cold and calculated. No one but a serial killer or psychopath would do something like that just to dig at someone in that way. I think this album's not gonna be very good. I'll still give it a listen in the curiosity, but man, that single didn't, oh, that left a bad taste in my mouth. We'll see, Taylor, I don't know what's happening with you. Obviously I'm a Kanye fan, so I'm team Kanye, but let's see what you got. Speaking of injustice, let's talk about Ed Sheeran beating Kendrick Lamar at the VMAs for Artist of the Year. Kendrick, when will you catch a break, my dude? First, Macklemore beat you with his incredibly average album, The Heist for album of the year. Then Taylor beat him with the incredibly average album 1989. This year he drops Damn, maybe his best album yet. I don't even know. And every time I listen to it, it grows on me even more. And you know who beats him? The guy that writes, I'm in love with the shape of your body. Whatever that song is, he beat Kendrick, someone who's incredibly politically active and saying things that are just socially just and, and ugh. I can't even get angry about this. It's just so typical for the awards culture of the VMAs and the Grammys. It's all just so BS and contrived. I don't even know why I'm upset about it. It really doesn't matter. Anyone who's anyone who knows music knows that Kendrick is much better of an artist overall than Ed Sheeran. This was a great month for getting in records. I got in a ton of things and I'm about to show you. Check it out. Let me tell you a little bit about I Am 8-Bit. Label based out of Los Angeles, where I'm from, and it is one of the premier labels releasing video game soundtracks. Now, when I first got into records, video game soundtracks were a novelty. There weren't that many around. There were some stuff from back in like the 90s and late 80s that were kind of like Atari soundtracks, and occasionally you can find some here and there for like special editions, like Red Dead Redemption had a vinyl record and things of that nature, but they weren't really in the mainstream until I Am 8-Bit was like, you know what? We're gonna put it in the mainstream, and that they did. They have been releasing all kinds of soundtracks from Journey to No Man's Sky to Banjo-Kazooie to now one of my favorite game series of all time, The Legend of Zelda. They had a Kickstarter going for The Hero of Time. The Slovak National Symphony Orchestra actually did the music for this. This is the music from Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, which is one of my favorite games ever and probably the best Zelda game, objectively. I got the Kickstarter variant because you gotta support a good Kickstarter. And this is what came out of it. This is a labor of love. Absolutely beautiful gatefold. The art, the color, it's just, it's its breathtaking. It, it shows off the dark and the light side. You have you have all the elements of, of Hyrule just blasting you in the face. The front has an ocarina die cut and you take out the sleeve. The sleeves have iconic areas such as the bridge where you talk to Saria right outside Kokiri Forest. And I mean, the Triforce is gold. Gold is an incredibly important color in Zelda. And look at this, this beautiful gold record and it has pieces of the heart container on the label. Everything about this is a labor of love. And it doesn't just look good, it sounds great. I've had gold records before that don't sound great for some reason. Maybe it was just the way they were mastered. So I was a little nervous about this, but this sounds fantastic. I cranked it up and I was just like closing my eyes, letting the symphony take me away. And I was immediately back to 1997, just playing my N64 all day, trying to beat Zelda. And yeah, the music is timeless. This is one of my favorite video game soundtracks. And this release does it justice. You can't get the Kickstarter version anymore, but they're currently taking pre-orders on their site for the green and purple swirl version of this. Same music, just a different variant. I recommend you pick it up because if you don't pick it up, down the road, this is definitely gonna be a collector's piece based on how it sounds, how it looks, and just the legend of Zelda. Next, I wanna talk about a label that I really love. I love small labels that put a lot of effort into their releases and everything about the albums they put out. And Elusive Sound, based out of Switzerland, is absolutely one of those labels I adore. They started in October of 2015. They put out music that they believe has a possibility of a strong legacy attached to it and has a beautiful aesthetic when it comes to the music and the packaging, just the whole visual audio combination. They, they want the whole package to bring something special to the fans. They had a line in their bio that I really liked and I don't wanna mess it up, so I'm gonna read it so I actually get it verbatim. Um, 
The name Elusive Sound originates from the desire to stimulate and support evanescent artists who otherwise may easily cease to exist if their artistic creative soul is extinguished. We will keep their flame alive and ensure that their creations will be heard forever. I mean, if I was an artist and I wanted to work with a label, that's exactly what I'd want to hear. I'd be like, yeah, keep my music alive forever and make a badass record. And that's all they do. They don't have that many releases, but the ones they do are so incredible on an audio level and the packaging and the variants are out of this world. They do mostly instrumental rock, post-rock kind of stuff. Some of it, you know, goes shoegazy. Some of it goes a little post-hardcore, some heavier, some softer, but that's generally the, the wheelhouse that they sit in. Before I actually show you the record that I got, I want to show you their custom mailer. They make these custom mailers that are like a tank. I was worried having a record coming from Switzerland because whenever you get records overseas, you never know if they're going to be damaged and then it's a you know, pain in the ass trying to get them replaced. This is like a multi-layered uh, taped just like tank. I got it and the record was in perfect condition when I got it. So props to you guys for making this badass mailer. The album I picked up was Turna, Lose Yourself to Find Peace. Uh, I think it's pronounced Turna, T-R-N-A. How would you pronounce that? This is a blackened post-rock black gaze band. So it has elements of post-rock, elements of shoegaze, and I guess kind of elements of black metal. It's not really super, super heavy, but it's just very atmospheric and dark and I get entranced when I listen to this album. It is, it is a masterpiece. It really is something made by talented musicians and I, I've never really heard anything like it in the genre. The front has this dark hot foil treatment to it so the turna on the front of the sleeve is actually like shiny and it has this gloss to it which is really cool. Inside, really nice, this kind of like wood etching and the wood theme actually goes along with their super special variant which I did not pick up because shipping was a little expensive for me. They made something like 50 copies of this in this etched wooden box and inside was the record and it was so nice looking and so well done and custom made. I one day may own that but not this time but I did get this really 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 beautiful variant of it and it matches the music so well. One side has this kind of like brown swirl kind of Light, light splatter to it, and the other side is absolutely gorgeous kind of feathering splatter. This visual right here represents what the music sounds like. They absolutely nailed it. And inside the download code isn't just a little tiny BS piece of paper. They give you this really nice card with the band name on the back, and it talks about the band and the, and the album, and it's numbered. I have number 54 out of 98 of this variant, so got lucky enough to get this. I think at the time I'm making this video, there are a couple left. I really recommend you check out Elusive Sound and you buy it because all the stuff in their back catalog out of print goes for way more than it did and you're going to regret it if you hear it later and you're like, I should have listened to Matt. So make sure you go check this out if you like instrumental music. Elusive Sound, you guys rock. I cannot wait to see what else you guys put out. I want to bring attention to one more label and that is Water Tower Music. This is the in-house record label for Warner Brothers Pictures and they do all kinds of film and TV soundtracks. I picked up a handful of things and everything sounds terrific. I just want to show off a couple things that they put out because if you like film soundtracks, TV soundtracks, all that kind of stuff, scores, this is a label that you're definitely going to want to check out their store. First up is Game of Thrones Season 6, music by Ramin Djawadi. He has done the music for every single season and his music is breathtaking. If you watch the show, you know that the music is an absolute important force that sets the tone for every scene. Um, I have a couple of the seasons on vinyl, but I wanted to get season six because of the presentation of it. It's just amazing. It has this huge, beautiful triple gatefold with all this, all these character shots from the season. And it's three discs of music. The third disc has a special treat. It has this really cool laser etching on the last side. Um, it has a bunch of the sigils and imagery from the from the different houses within Game of Thrones. It's This is really cool. I almost want to just frame this. This looks so badass. There's over 90 minutes of music on there, so if you're a Game of Thrones fan, this is like an afternoon for you. Just sit down and dive in and make up your own storylines. I don't know. Westworld Season 1. Ramin also did the music for this, so you know it's good. This is a great show. Uh, people think it might be the next Game of Thrones. I don't know if it's quite going to be that, but I will say on season one, the music was absolutely the standout. And that's because they had some incredible covers of some of the best songs I know. They did beautiful, beautiful covers of Black Hole Sun by Soundgarden, Painted Black by the Rolling Stones, No Surprises by Radiohead, Exit Music for a Film. This is like a Radiohead fan's dream. 
and this soundtrack sounds just as good as it seems. I got it on Dolores Blue colored vinyl. It looks really, really nice. And you can also get it on Milky White or Blood Red. I honestly think I like the music more than the actual show, so I'm really, really excited to spin this constantly. Here's a really fun one. So this is one that, you know, if you're feeling the mood for something kitty and, and you know, laid back, you got the Lego Batman movie. It has a couple different variants you can get. It has the Robin edition on red, the Batman edition on black and yellow, Batgirl edition on lavender, and the Joker edition on purple and green. I'm a big fan of Robin. I think he's an awesome character. So I got the Robin and I love that center label. It looks so cool with that red. Like what a what a classic throwback to that costume. Soundtrack itself is real good. You got music from DNCE, you got Patrick Stump, uh, you got Richard Cheese and Lounge Against the Machine. If you haven't heard him, it's a lot of like parodies of famous other songs. Um, and he does Everything is Awesome, which is the Lego movie song. Yeah, Cutting Crew, I Just Died in Your Arms Tonight, classic song. Some people say that Will Arnett is the best Batman, and uh, he may be. They also do picture discs very well. I love when a label doesn't skimp on a picture disc and it actually sounds good. Music from The Conjuring 1 and 2. Really spooky good stuff, and I think these movies are great, and the picture disc is super creepy. Look at that doll, it's creeping me out. And if you got to see Batman The Killing Joke, this is another one, great score. And you got I Go Looney performed by the great Mark Hamill, who I believe is the best Joker ever. Sorry to all the other Jokers, you were great, but Mark Hamill is my Joker. Finally, I love this. This is the Music of DC Comics Volume 2. Basically, this is 80 years of music over various DC projects. I mean, you got stuff from like the 1940s from the Superman radio show, and then you got John Williams music, Hans Zimmer, Danny Elfman, the Batman animated series theme, which is oh, my favorite Batman. And yeah, this whole thing is just, if you're a fan of all of the different DC characters, like you can see on here, this art is fantastic. Um, I think this, oh, look at that on the inside too. So cool. You know, for anyone that loves comics and loves comic movies and DC, this is a must own because some of this music is so good. And yeah, this is four, two discs of just beautiful stuff. Mayhem Lorenz, Terminal Illness. I talked to you guys about this album in the A-side. This is one of the most underrated hip hop albums. He is in Action Bronson's posse. Uh, and I was able to track down the limited colored variant from Chopped Herring. Doesn't look like much when it's out of the light. When you put it in the light, it is one of my favorite variants I have ever seen. It looks kind of like swampy, just if you look at it normally, but under the light, it is just so beautiful. All these colors that come together in this really nice spectrum. Uh, this is a great hip hop album, and there's only like a hundred and something copies of this colored version, so I guarantee you once everyone realizes how damn good Mayhem Loren is, this is gonna be sought after, and I'm glad I own it. Let's talk Moonshake. I got my Moonshake vinyl bootlegs in of video game music. Now, I Am 8-Bit does all the real official license stuff, and I don't know specifically about how these licenses work for the Moonshake stuff. They sound good, not quite as good as the I Am 8-Bit stuff, because those are like really well sourced. These though, compared to the previous Moonshake releases, definitely have stepped their game up. And I enjoyed everything he's put out so far, but these are definitely on a whole new level on a packaging and Sonic level. Donkey Kong Country, this is a classic Johnny Cash cover. And of course you got Mr. Donkey Kong hanging out there. And the back is the barrels and it looks really nice. It's just a very good homage. And the actual record is so cool looking. It's white with this yellow banana splatter on it. Um, yeah, I love the Donkey Kong Country soundtrack. It is arguably top 10 video game soundtracks ever. It is so catchy, almost vapor wavy at times before vapor wave was even a thing. Some of those tracks are real earworms and they will get stuck in your head. And after I spun this, I think there were three or four days where I just heard various tracks like the underwater track, Ugh, so good. And then this Metroid release marks the first gatefold that Moonshake has ever done. Look at this awesome melancholy and the infinite sadness inspired cover with Samus just chilling there and the font. This is so well done. Uh, as you can see on the inside, it's a really nice gatefold with the sky and the, and the Metroid ship. Uh, you got the soundtrack for Super Metroid, Metroid 2, and Metroid all across these two discs. The back is a peelable sticker. This is an homage to Velvet Underground and Nico's peelable banana. Um, I'm not going to peel this because I don't want to desecrate this beautiful thing. I don't even know what's underneath it though. Um, maybe I'll look for a picture online. I probably should have looked. If I can find one, I'll put it right here. These discs are amazing looking too. I mean, these are like super nice clear discs with red and green splatter. Um, they sound good. They, the soundtrack is great. Metroid was a huge part of my childhood. Uh, the NES one specifically. I didn't play a ton of Super Metroid, unfortunately, but uh, Metroid 1 was definitely a, a mainstay in my household. This is surprisingly even better than I expected. Little Ugly Mane's three-sided tape volume one. So this is two discs. The first three sides are comprised of a bunch of stuff that are kind of just 
files and scrapped ideas and things that were on his computer. Just nothing that was ever released uh, in any full format. Some of it can be a little hip hop -y, like jazzy hip hop beats. Some of it's a little heavier. There's some parts that are punk rock. Uh, there's some that are just like aggressive noise. And a lot of it are just really good beats that I guess were unused from Little Ugly Man projects. Some of them are demos of songs from other Little Ugly Man projects. But the best part of this that I didn't know, Side D was a secret side. No one knew what it was until they actually got the copy of the record in. Side D is the entire mixtape that he released this year under the alias Bedwetter. And that is just as good as any of the Little Ugly Man stuff. So I didn't know if that was gonna get a vinyl release and I didn't think it would, but the fact that they put it onto this, so cool. And I hope that when this sells out, everyone realizes it and they're like, what, Bedwetter's on there? And then all of a sudden it's gone and you can't get it and you gotta pay a ridiculous price. Love this. I love all the sides. Some of those beats are so, so good. It almost reminds me of the avalanches at times. Just very chilled out. Um, yeah, I love this. This is great. And finally, my good friend Richard Houghton, amazing musician who cuts his own records, has released All Guitars 2. Now, All Guitars 1 was a lathe cut record on clear vinyl with this really cool etching in it if you looked at the right angle. And it was all covers with guitar and of course a little bit of cello and other instruments in there a really good down-tempo electronic songs. He had Grimes on there, he had Square Pusher, he had Aphex Twin, he did all kinds of really cool stuff. And with All Guitars 2, he did it again, except he also included some Richard Originals. And now he is such a good musician that, amazing. I mean, every song on this is brilliant. He's got Aphex Twin, DJ Shadow, Bonobo, Orbital. Uh, he has a David Lynch and Licky Lee song. And DJ Crush, who is an amazing musician from Japan. I was able to score all of the things he dropped with All Guitars 2. There were two seven inches. Uh, I don't have the second one with me because he actually couldn't find it when I went to his house to, to get it from him, but he has it somewhere, so I'm gonna grab that. But this is the first one, and it has this really crazy trippy label that has these holograms that almost like pop out even without spinning it or without doing anything crazy. They're just etched in this really unique way. When you spin it, beautiful. This one he cut in his lathe machine and it has these crazy etchings right here. And when you actually play it, you see this amazing hologram. Uh, it's hard to tell obviously until you actually play it. And I'll show you what it looks like right now. And this one, he actually pressed at a pressing plant. And it's the same album, just different versions of it. And it has this really trippy label. The labels do this crazy thing when you play them. And uh, I'll show you that right now. Those are gone, unfortunately, but I can't tell you guys enough. Follow Richard's stuff. He goes by Bloomy Pedal, he goes by Richard Houghton, and whenever he drops records, they go in minutes, hour tops. You gotta be on that. So, Richard, good work again, amazing stuff, really cool, fun things you did with this. Be the man. All right, guys, that was a lot to talk about. Hope you guys enjoyed the B-side. I'll be back soon with the A-side for next month, what I'm looking forward to hearing and what I'm looking forward to receiving in the mail. Uh, let me know what you picked up this month. Let me know what your thoughts are. And as always, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, please subscribe, and I'll see you very soon.